Okay, tonight we we'll talk a little bit about nutrition, um, and not so much about daily diet nutrition because um, you might be paleo, you might be vegan, you might be vegetarian, you might be any of those things, and there's reasons that all of them work well and all of them don't work well, and if it works for you, go for it. But we're going to talk more about performance nutrition, talk about fueling for events and fueling for your workouts and exercise. Um, there is always a big contention over carbs, how many carbs you should have, whether you should have carbs. Um, they'll, there are people who've done exceedingly well on very, very low carb intakes and in long, long distance races. Uh, so it can be done. One thing you have to remember, everybody is not the same. And I don't know if you've ever heard of, of different types of muscle fibers, I think I'm twitch fibers. There are type one or slow twitch fibers. These things are good for long, um, low power outputs. If you're, a, a, if you're Sid out for a 50 or 100 mile trail run, or if you're, if you're gonna do an Ironman, you're gonna be out there for 11, 12, 13 hours, you're gonna use a lot of this kind of type one muscle fiber. Type 1 muscle fiber tends to like fat. It burns fat efficiently, um, doesn't need a lot of carbs. So if you're a human being built out of a lot of type 1 muscle fiber, and you'll know that because you love those long events, you, you thrive on things that last all day, um, you probably don't need as many carbs or the quantity of carbs that Usain Bolt needs. Um, Usain Bolt is not gonna work well on fats. He is, is all fast twitch fibers. Fast twitch fibers uh, predominantly enjoy carbohydrates, and so he's got to do well on those. So how do we know what and when? Well, first thought is, what am I going to do? I'm, I'm getting up in the morning. I'm going to do a morning workout. Should I fuel or shouldn't I fuel? Well, there's a couple choices. If my morning workout is going to be a very casual our bike ride. I'm just gonna just turn the pedals and get some time in. Um, you really don't need to fuel for that and you particularly don't need a lot of carbohydrates for that. You're not gonna burn a lot, a lot of carbohydrates because you're gonna be at a fairly low effort level and your body will adapt to burning fat more efficiently if you let it burn fat more often. The more endurance you do, the better your body will get at burning fat. So if you're gonna do a workout that doesn't require a lot of, of high energy activity, um, you'd be fine doing it fasted. People who were unfortunate enough to train with me last fall, we did some, last summer did some fasted workouts where we actually depleted our carbohydrates on Friday intentionally and then went for a long run, long, slow run on Saturday depleted. Um, whether or not we got any benefit from that, I'm not sure. It's I, it was a little bit of an experiment. I'm not sure how often I'll do it because what it did do is, is it made everybody fairly cranky for the next week or so. <laughs> and, um, it probably cost us some training in the future to, to try and get some benefit in the present. But again, if, if you're going to do a low intensity workout and if you're training for a long event, then I would encourage you to do some fasted workouts once in a while. Now, if you're going to get up and you're gonna do five times five minutes at VO2 max pace, you're gonna go hard. Um, this is something you should be fueled for. Now you would still burn fat better if you weren't fueled. The problem is you won't get everything out of the workout. You won't have enough energy to get the muscular adaptations that you want from the workout. It has a completely different purpose and it needs carbohydrates. I don't care who you are, you are not running at VO2 kind of pace, which is really hard, uh, faster than 5K race pace, you're not doing that on fats. Um, so if you wanna get all the benefit from that workout you can get, then you should try carbohydrates. So you've done your workout, now what do I do afterwards? Well, you need to replenish what you lost. And again, what you lost depends on what you did. If you did that, that hour long, very easy bike ride, you lost some, you know, some fat, which you don't really care about. You could restock your carbohydrates. 
Now, if you did that VO2 max workout or you did a hill workout or you did a downhill workout and you know you might have some muscular soreness tomorrow, you burn some carbohydrates, but you also burn some protein because you, you damaged your muscles to some extent. You used them hard and you created some damage in the actual muscle tissue. So muscles are made of protein. So now we want to add a little protein to the mix. So now for that kind of workout, hard, hard workout or downhill workout, any workout that's going to leave you sore, then we've got some carbohydrates and we've got some protein with that. So that's before and after workouts. Um, that is really after workouts, you're best off getting refueled fairly quickly. And sometimes this is hard because you're late, you're gonna to get to work, you finish your workout and you, you jump in the shower, you jump out of the pool, you jump in the shower and you head off. You've got a window of a couple hours where your body will absorb nutrients, particularly carbohydrates better and faster. And you can actually condition your body to hold more carbohydrates in your liver, in your blood, and your muscles. So if you can replenish within two hours of finishing your workout, you're better off. If you can do it right away, you're better off still. One other point, um, when you do workouts that are going to leave you sore and damaged, how should I take that protein in? You shouldn't take all the protein in at once. Your body will not use it all. It won't metabolize it all. It'll end up, you know, some of it just being excreted. So you're better off taking protein. If you're going to try and take, and I promised Julie I wouldn't get into numbers because <laughs> it irritates her. Um, you should break your protein input into three or four times during the day. Possibly something at breakfast, something at lunch, something at dinner. And a great time to take protein is before bed at night. Um, a lot of your muscle healing and muscle synthesis happens while you're sleeping. It's when recovery, the very best recovery time happens when you're sleeping at night. So you want to be sure that your body has what it needs so that it can replenish the, the sores that it needs. If you're going to rebuild muscle, you want to do it at night and you want to take some carbs. So your, your fourth thing could be, I'm going to take a, a protein shake before bed is not a bad thing to do. Okay, so any questions on what and when to take ground workouts? Anybody? I covered it that well. Everything <laughs> you needed to know. Okay. Um, the other thing you probably need to know, and we'll get into this when we talk about race fueling, is there is a limit to how quickly your body will metabolize proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. And no matter how much you throw in your mouth, um, it's not going to make any difference. Your body still only metabolizes them at a certain rate. And again, we're not all the same. Um, and every carbohydrate doesn't metabolize at the same rate. So if you are somebody who burns a lot of carbohydrates, you're that fast twitch muscle fiber person, um, you sh will easily be able to, to digest and to metabolize something like uh, a gram per, sorry, Julie, a gram per minute. And if you look at any of these things, you look at uh, SIS, and if I could read it, it's 22 grams of carbohydrates in this little guy, okay? So theoretically, you, if you do more than one of these every 22 minutes, you're not going to metabolize it. If you do a whole bunch of it, if you do three of these at once and think, there, I'm good for an hour, that doesn't work well either because now you your body has a whole bunch of stuff backed up in your tummy that isn't going to be absorbed and metabolized. And that's when you get that, that bloated feeling and maybe some, you know, some lower GI distress. You put more in your body faster than your body was able to use it. So that's also not a good idea. Um, also talk about not just uh, fueling for calories, but fueling for <clears throat> hydration. When you take calories, particularly carbohydrates, well, and fats too, they need to be diluted. So there's something called isotonic, and that means that the things in your stomach are of the proper viscosity, they're of the right thickness to get into your intestine, to, for your lower intestine to absorb them. 
certain things are hypotonic. Uh, you know, this SIS goo happens to be. You don't have to take this with water. Um, goo is different. Goo, you need about eight ounces of water to get this little guy down. If you take it without water, it'll sit in your stomach and it'll hydrate itself. Well, if there isn't any water in your stomach, it's gonna look around for moisture sources and it's gonna start pulling it out of your intestine. And again, you're gonna get that stomach ache. So if you're doing something, and again, this is kind of cool because it's in a way smaller package than this. It's way lighter and it's probably actually more calories. Yeah, it is actually more calories. This is, uh, this is 20 more calories than this big guy. But you need eight ounces of water with this. Well, what's eight ounces of water? I don't you know, how am I measuring water while I'm out on the course? Well, one gulp of water, you know, you take a glass of water, one gulp is about an ounce for most people. Well, that shouldn't be bad, eight gulps of water. When you're out on a course and you grab a glass of water off the table and you go to drink it, think about how many times you get eight gulps of water down. If you get two down, three down, you're probably doing pretty well. You know, you're, particularly if you're running, now, if you're on your bike and you've got water handy, this is different. And if you're doing a really long race, like an ultra, and, and you don't mind stopping and getting these things done. But if you're in a half marathon, you're in a marathon, you don't want to stop, you know, time is important to you, you really have to pay attention to how many, how many gulps of water you're getting if you're going to do one of these things, because it'll, it'll upset your tummy. Same thing with these guys. You know these blocks people like these blocks it's different it's something in your mouth that adds some taste um, and this guy is serving size is three and there's so this is a hundred this hundred calories so this is about the same as this but you're gonna need at least eight ounces probably more to get this done so think about as you're taking these calories in think about I've also got to be drinking so the other choice is, well, you know what, I'll just mix up my drink and I'll, I'll drink and eat at the same time. I'll get my calories through my liquid. And that can work fine. The problem is, you know, this takes a whole bottle of water to dilute, 500, uh, you know, half a liter of water to dilute this guy. And so you carry a lot of water with you. And again, if you're on a bike, not a big deal. If you're in an ultra, not as big a deal because you're more accustomed to carrying liquids. But for a lot of people running shorter races or uh, even up to a marathon, it's a lot to carry. Okay, so now it's race day. What are we gonna do to get ready for a race? We've got the training thing down. Um, we've done a lot of our training using the stuff we're gonna use in the race because we're getting our, our body ready to do what it's gonna do in the race. So. If on the course they have Gatorade Endurance, which a lot of courses have because I think Gatorade gives a lot of, uh, lot of races, a lot of money, then if you decide you're gonna use what's on the course, then you should be using that when you're training. If you say, well, I don't like that as well, too bad, or use something else in the race because you really need to use, you need to be used to what you're gonna use in the race in your training uh, on a daily basis. So we get up on the morning of our Ironman, our marathon, our 100 miler, and we're gonna eat breakfast. So how much breakfast are we gonna eat and when are we gonna eat it? Again, you can only metabolize four grams, um, or one gram, I'm sorry, carbohydrates a minute. So if you count to how long your race is, if you want it all digested, that's how many grams of carbohydrates you can eat. If you eat more than that, it won't be digested when your race starts, and you have to account for that. I don't know how they do this in uh, in ultras because I work some stations in ultras, and they during the race they eat some really crazy things. Right. And why is that? <laughs> well. Um, I mean, the concepts are the same for ultras, but when you're out there that long, if you're if you're doing those goo packs and water for four hours, um, you're going to just be so sick of it. Um, that's why ultra aid stations have evolved to P 
pizzas and pizza rolls and pretzels and chips and pretty much everything you can imagine, just so you have something you know, different texture in your palate. Um, it it kind of works both ways because you don't train that way. Nobody trains with a piece of pizza. Well, maybe some people do, but. Uh, yeah. So that's when it starts to go downhill when you say, oh, that looks great right now, but you know, your stomach's not ready for that. So um, that's, that's kind of why. Um, and I think it's just gotten out of hand. It's just got worse and worse. It is. So I, I was, what's the most outrageous thing we can put on this table and then the next race tried to beat that? I was giving people cups of cold chili. Oh. <laughs> I just couldn't imagine anything worse than that. But anyway, so... <laughs> We're gonna get up morning, we're gonna eat something like 600 calories of food is about the right amount a couple hours before the event. You probably need to get up to get this done. So we get our calories in and because we've planned everything ahead, we know exactly what we're gonna do when a race comes. This is really the key to this whole thing is before your event, you need to plan what am I gonna take and when am I gonna take it, how often, Am I going to take liquids? If it's hot, I'm going to take more. If it's you know, if it's not hot and I take too many, I won't sweat them out and I'll end up having to use the bathroom more than I want to. So you really need to sit down and spend some time planning your day and planning. If it's an Ironman, it's a long day. Remember, the further into these things you go, the less your tummy is going to want solid food. So while I, I admire people that can eat chili out of, cold chili out of a can <laughs> 70 miles into a race I, I don't understand it but I really admire it the honest truth is your stomach most people are not going to be able to digest solid foods late in an event so if you're going to plan on on bars or solid foods um, get them in early when your stomach is still you know your blood is still around your digestive system is still working right um, as you get further into the event, you're better off going to more and more liquid things because uh, you're not going to be able to digest as well. Um, again, the, you've got to have a plan for this. You have a plan. You know, obviously, you're not going to you're not going to eat during the swim. You're not going to drink during. Hopefully, you won't drink during the swim. But you want to get something as you head off. You're in the water for 30 minutes to you know two hours get out and realize how many calories you burned and think, okay, I'm going to have to do something now to make up those calories. And I'm going to have to do it keeping track of the fact that I can only digest at a certain rate. And that is again, that, you know, one to one and a half grams. And again, there, there's four calories in a gram. So your four to six calories a minute is what you can digest. And if you put more than that in, you can, okay, I'm gonna pack in really quick because I'm on the bike and I've got all this stuff. Um, it'll just sit in your stomach and it'll probably end up not ending well for you. So you have to be, you have to plan it and you have to stay with your plan. Now, things are gonna change. You may get out there, particularly on the run, in a long race, whether it's a marathon, an ultra, or uh, you know, a long triathlon, and you may start to feel sloshing in your stomach. If you're sloshing, you probably have had too much to drink. And so you probably could back off on solution a little bit and you could maybe try something more solid. Um, on the other hand, if you have stomach really bad lower intestinal cramps, you probably need water. You're, you've taken too many solids, your, your system is looking for something to dilute that down. Um, get something that's just water. Um, no more calories, um, just dilute what's in your body, and hopefully that will give your, your GI system a little rest and uh, you know, get the break that you need to get through it. So, it, you know, before I do a long race, particularly before I do, you know, before I did, I was doing a lot of marathons, I knew where the, where the aid stations were, and I knew what aid stations I was going to use and what I was going to use at each aid station. So if I was using something like a goo, I knew I would have trouble drinking eight ounces at an aid station. So if they were every mile, I'd have, at the first aid station, I would try and get down four or five gulps. Then right before the second aid station, I would take my goo and I would try and get down another four or five gulps at the second aid station. That way I knew I had a pretty good chance of having 
the right amount of liquid in my stomach. But you have to plan that ahead of time. And you can't decide, geez, I'm getting kind of tired. I think I'll throw a goo down. I forgot there's not an aid station for three miles. You know, and that 20 or 25 minutes is gonna, you're gonna be upset. So look at the course, decide what you've been training with, you know, train with what you plan to use in the race. And that's a great time to experiment. If you think you like, you know, something like these guys in your mouth, um, when you're running, because you like the feel of it, or you like to chew something that's different, um, use them a lot. Use them, you know, use them every long run, at least every long run that you're feeling for. Um, if you are worried about what you're taking, definitely take it beforehand. And if you don't like to carry a lot of food and you're going to take what's on the course, then you've got to practice with what's on the course, and you've got to get used to it. Um, one more point, if you are gonna, you know, you can always carry goos, even, you know, almost any time you've got a pocket, you can carry goos. Be sure not to mix them with something like, you know, a Gatorade Endurance, because again, we've got to get that, we've got to get that osmosity down to where it will soak into our intestine. And if we take a, a bunch of carbohydrates and goo, and we add a thick bunch of carbohydrates in Gatorade, that's not going to dilute the goo down enough and you're going to have, it's going to be just like not a problem. So this is all something you've got to plan and you've got to think through. You've got to think through when are you going to take it? What are you going to take it with? And you know, if, if it's not working, how are you going to adjust? And again, good to do in training because once the race comes, um, it's too late. Any more thoughts on? Oh, uh, we just wanted to add to that. Um, combining different um, pieces of nutrition. So if you're used to carrying Tailwind, Tailwind's meant to be used by itself. If you start grabbing a gel at an aid station just because it, you know, it's almost habit or somebody else grabs one, you grab it, oh, that looks good. Um, remember that you're now adding calories and you're taking away some of the fluid to digest that. Um, so that, that's really not the right thing to do. Um, and uh, one other thing is just, um, Jack mentioned train the way you're going to race. Keep notes on your training. So if, you, if you've got a big training run, when you get up in the morning and you have breakfast, write down what you had for breakfast, write down what you take on your run, so that when you're done, you can also note how that went. You know, did your stomach blow up or, you know, was it a good run? So you know what to do next time and you can start tweaking it. To when it gets to be race day, you can, you know, have the stars aligned, so to speak, which is tough to do. But if you keep track of what you're doing, you're going to know what's working. You're going to remember better. Like, hey, I need to do that again, or I never do that again. So that's my two big pieces of advice for the longer run. You may need to make some adjustments for weather too. On a hot day, you may want more of your calories and liquids than you will on a cold day. And some of that is just because if you're not sweating as much, you're gonna end up just having to stop more often, which is you know, irritating sometimes. So, you know, pay attention to the weather and if the weather changes. Um, one last thing is, uh, is salt intake. I know a lot of people in long, long events will supplement with salt. And I will say some people need it and some people don't. There are some people that are they're very salty, heavy, salty sweaters, and you'll know it because when you finish a, a run in the summer, you'll you'll have that that coating, you have that 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 crusty kind of you'll see white in you. Then you're a salty sweater, and then pay attention. You know that's the last piece of this is there is there's sodium in some things. There's not sodium in others. Pay attention to how much sodium you're taking in, and this is another thing that's really good to work on in training. Um, there are some some sodium only kind of supplements that you can take. If you never, if you're either, you know, if you sweat but you don't ever really feel it salty, you can sweat like crazy and then you dry off and there's no salt residue on, on your clothes, or you're probably not a salty sweater. And so even though you sweat heavily, you might not need the salt intake of somebody else. Um, the only caveat to that is I, you know, when you're taking salt, you tend to be a saltier sweater. If, if your salt intake gets over the top, you're gonna to sweat out that extra salt. So um, 
it's it's a little bit of a balancing act trying to figure out where your correct salt intake is. But again, something you should experiment with, and particularly when you're running, because that's when the most stress on your digestive system is when you're running. Um, less when you're biking, of course, when you're swimming, you're swimming. But um, do these things more when you're running and do them in practice. Once again, the only caveat is I, I do like to see people do some of their longer, easier workouts with very little fueling because it is you will adapt and burn fat better if you're a, a long distance athlete doing, you know, doing half Ironman, full Ironman marathons. You know, even even an Olympic. I mean, Olympics is a few hours, and that's a long time to be out there. So in that case, burning fat is is helpful and and making it a, a part of your training is useful. Just again, remember which part you. Should when you should be uh, fueling with carbs and when you shouldn't be. Yes, ma'am. Does anybody need fueling for a 5K or a 10K? A lot of times I'll see people standing at the start line of their 5K sucking down a goo. No, you really probably don't. Um, <laughs> it, you can't even kind of mess yourself up. You know, when, when you take a, a goo, this is all sugar. It's, it's just a sugar bomb. And when you need sugar, when you're deep in a race, you, all you want is carbohydrates. That's what you're trying to replenish. But when you're not burning sugar at that rate, you can take a, you know, drink a, a Gatorade an hour before your 5K, have a couple of goos. Well, there's a reaction of insulin in your body and your body will start, you know, it, it will react to that sugar and start producing insulin and can make you feel very lethargic. So you can actually kind of over sugar particularly for shorter events, and um, end up feeling worse rather than better. Um, there is one thing, there's an area like a half marathon for a lot of people where you're not gonna burn through all your carbohydrates in an hour and 40 minute race. You have enough carbohydrates to get through that. However, your body has sensors and it knows the carbohydrate level in your, in your muscles and in your bloodstream. And there's a theory that it will actually give you less muscle recruitment and, and signal muscles less strongly if it feels like your levels are starting to get down. So even though you're not out of carbohydrates in medium length events, and this would be like a half marathon or, or Olympic uh, triathlon, you may benefit from taking carbohydrates just because it lets your internal systems know that there's no risk here of running out of carbohydrates. So it can continue to fire those muscles aggressively because things are all good for what it's worth. Anything else? So don't take a goo before our two mile fun run. <laughs> don't I've eat it. I've seen it happen. We have seen it happen actually. Unless you just love goo and that's a snack. I, we do know somebody who buys goos as a snack, which I do not understand. I think they're just oh. gross. But anyway, any other questions? Yeah, yes. One on, uh, you mentioned on like the tailwind. Hmm? This uh, go bar that's probably similar, I think. Sure. So if I'm mixing that and put it in my bottle on my bike, I shouldn't be doing any empty in my go along with it because that isn't already there. Or right. Any idea? Yeah. I mean, you want to check the calorie and the carb content and, and what you're, you know, just do all the measurements that way, but you shouldn't really need anything else. I mean, if you want to do them both, you can, but you have to remember you'll need water yeah. for the goo. You can't dilute it with the go far, dilute it with the, you know, yeah, then you just have to tailwind. Carry another, another bottle that's just yeah. water, okay. which some people do on, you know, if you have a hydration vest and you're, One's water, one's tailwind. And for heavy salters, a lot of people will carry one bottle that is is just a mixture of sodium. Um, that's where they'll get their sodium intake from if they feel like they're not getting enough from all of these things. Um, so, it, like I said, you, you need to really experiment with this stuff in training. And you need to have a plan. So, like Sid said, it's a great idea. Write down um, what you did, what, what you had that morning, when you had it what you took during your run um, and how you felt and try and zero in on things that work for you and things that don't. It's a, it's a great time of year to be messing with things because most people aren't competing. So um, if something doesn't work well this time of year, you haven't missed much. And I've had so many bad races due to stomach issues that I, I write down what I had the night before. You know, I go back 
that far just to kind of figure out and I've got it pretty much figured out now but that's what it takes is just to write it down and try to remember what works and what doesn't yeah we I mean I usually can't eat a big dinner the night before a, a dinner with a lot of uh, starch or, or not starch a lot of uh, meats you know not a lot of fiber um, I have to in fact we a lot of times we eat something like pancakes the night before because it's just really easy to digest and you can get a pretty good idea how many calories you're taking Any other questions? Really want to go run. Yeah. Anybody want to put pizza in their special needs bed? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks everybody. Thank you. Go run.